The portal continues to stay busy, and so do we at Locked On Bama. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everybody, welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. We'll talk about FanDuel in just a bit. And also, thank you for making us your first listen every single day. You guys are the absolute best. Jimmy, we're going to start back off in the portal again because the portal never seems to close. It is <laughs> what was that movie um, that had a, they did a whole TV series about it on it where like you, you could get in a portal at any time, and I don't know. I forget the name. Star of Trek? Movie. Star, not Star Trek. Star Gate. Maybe Star Gate. Where were they Something portaling like, to? I don't know. They, I think Utah. But um, <laughs> anyway. So, I don't think so that's so how cool. the transfer portal's working. I mean, the Utes so, are pretty good, but I don't think they get everybody. So more Alabamers are in the portal. I guess they're no longer Bammers. Um, Jake Pope is in the mm-hmm. portal. This is a guy that, uh, you know, we had some hope for um, yep. because he, he showed out in the spring game and uh, he's, you know, played for a, a great program in high school. Um, and look, I mean, I guess you can't blame him, whatever. I, I mean, it's just part of the process. Then meanwhile, I'm going to run down a few of these and then just let you get your comments. Monkel Goodwine has gone to South Carolina. Interesting, Interesting in the sense that we play South Carolina next year. Um by the way, South Carolina is cleaning up in the portal. Now, do you think they're getting a bunch of home runs? I, probably not. But they're getting some dudes that Alabama wanted, that uh, one in Rocket Sanders that was a star at Arkansas. So, I mean, they're getting some dudes. Uh, Eli Holstein to Pitt, I, that seems so right. I don't even know how to call it wrong. That seems, <laughs> Eli Holstein seems like Pitt's quarterback even when he was at Alabama. Does he not? <laughs> Um, I do like then, I do like the fit. I like the choice. Then Seth McLaughlin to Ohio State, and before everybody you know spits their coke all over the screen, Seth McLaughlin isn't a bad player. We've been trying to say that. Now there's some folks that got in our our comments and said, "Look, y'all were too easy on Seth." I mean, the game really was lost by him. It, the, I don't know if it was lost by him. Yes, he had a bad game in the national championship, a bad game, and he didn't, have, frankly, have a great year, but. Alabama tried to keep him. Alabama wanted him to stay, and now he's getting to go to Ohio State. So for a dude that – you know what it kind of reminds me of? It's like – maybe it's like Pete Davidson. I don't think he's super funny, but he keeps getting all the hot girls, and he keeps getting on SNL, and he keeps getting movie parts. I'm not a huge fan, but somebody likes him. Seth Seth McLaughlin is the same way. Somebody seems to like him, and he's getting with the good programs. He's not transferring to Utah State. He's transferring to the Ohio State University. So of all those, Jimmy, though, and we don't know where Jake Pope's headed yet, of, mm-hmm. of the three that I mentioned, Goodwine to South Carolina, Holstein to Pitt, and McLaughlin to Ohio State, I would say McLaughlin is the big winner. I would say the one that's probably got the most chance to chance to play is good wine and i think the best fit is probably holstein so i think they all ended up somewhere good for them hey this will be uh something here uh and and again everybody record this everybody likes to say you were wrong you were wrong get your recorder ready because this could be spectacularly wrong but that's how i feel i think seth mclaughlin will be the first team all big 10 center next year he'll be the best uh center in that league and uh, and and will do a really good job at Ohio State. He obviously has to cure the yips. That's really hard to do. Some athletes never get past it. Some athletes, the yips ruin their careers and they're never the same. Others do get over it and and get over it quickly and then resume being what they were. And what people uh, I think fail to know or realize is how good Seth is at everything but snapping the ball. And he used to be pretty good at snapping the ball. I don't recall in 2021 when he helped save the season and deliver us to the playoff, literally, because Alabama's offensive line was so bad and was having so much trouble. And then Seth comes in and sort of stabilizes things at the end, including a win over Georgia where he was blocking Jordan Davis for 60 minutes. 
people just forget that and 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 because they're so mad about what happened in the last game but that's why Nick Saban wanted Seth back on the team and uh Nick Saban didn't run Seth McLaughlin off uh that's been made you know completely clear but Seth uh I think he'll be an all Big 10 center at Ohio State now he's got to cure the ips for that to happen and uh that's what I'm interested to see Fry their offensive line coach has one of the biggest reputations in the sport and uh, Fry thinks he can cure this. That's why they wanted him, and that's why they took him. They think they can cure the yips. Um, now, Holstein will have an excellent opportunity at Pitt. I agree with Luke so much. It, it, I never would have guessed Pitt, but now that it is Pitt, I'm like, boy, this makes all sorts of sense because it seems that they've had a lot of success with quarterbacks like Eli Holstein, pocket, big, physical, pocket passers, and – uh Boy, Holstein's good. I I, I think I've read a lot of comments about Holstein that I think have been way off base. Holstein did nothing at Alabama that made people think that that it was the wrong decision to take him. I I think his future at Alabama would have been really bright. He just had the misfortune of showing up at the same time Dylan Lonergan did. And it ends up, while they came in similarly rated as prospects, Dylan is the one that took, took to it, you know, like a duck to water. I mean, Dylan... Dylan is the one that showed up and immediately won some hype, you know, from the staff and from people who watch. So really, I think Holstein is like, gosh, I could stay here and maybe I do OK, but am I, am I ever going to be ahead of Lonergan? And the problem with Lonergan is he's my age, so I could time out just waiting for my chance. Uh, you know, if, if Lonergan's always going to be ahead of me here, uh, that doesn't just because Lonergan's ahead of him doesn't mean that Eli Holstein isn't a great prospect, really because Lonergan's a great prospect. So I, I think Eli would do well at Pitt, and uh, I won't even be shocked if he's the starting quarterback at Pitt next season. That that will not shock me. Uh, I, I don't expect it, but I won't be shocked. Goodwine's going to play at South Carolina. You mark that down right now. He, he, he might not be the starter. He might not be a star player, but he'll be in the rotation uh, of defensive linemen that play with the first team. And as for Jake Pope, Look, guys, this is a real shame to me of our new landscape of college football. Now you sign a kid like Jake Pope and you're like, you know what? Year three, year four, he's going to be something, man. He's going to be something in year three or year four. Well, guess what? They don't make it to year three or year four anymore. They're gone before then. They leave before then because they're never going to be patient enough to stay to year three or four and concern that, hey, when I get to year three or year four, you're going to sign a year one Caleb Downs that's going to show up. And and, and, and at Alabama, you could always sign a Caleb Downs, and I'll get leapfrogged by kids behind me. Uh, And that's uh, I I think Jake Pope's a good illustration of, man, you sign a kid that that you're projecting to be a year three, year four guy, they're they're gone. Alabama spent two years turning Jake Pope into a good player, and now he'll be a good player for somebody else. You know, in that sense, it's almost like schools like Alabama are, in a way, some junior colleges. I mean, they're sort of prepping these guys that you don't see a lot of, and then they get to go somewhere else and and potentially be a star, and they get yeah. good preparation. Half the rosters <laughs> like that right now. Half. I would say half the rosters. Ultimately, guys that were developing to be players somewhere else. Half the roster. The other half are Caleb Downs. And that's why Alabama's good. Yeah. Uh, sometimes looking at the transfer portal can make you sick, but I'm going to tell you about something that'll help you when you're sick. <laughs> I'm definitely going to tell you about something that'll help you when you're sick. <clears throat> and that's Jace Medical. I hope they can clear some phlegm uh, because apparently that's what I've got. I'm not sure about that. I'll check on that. Uh, I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of life, but can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. It's very scary stuff right now. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if my daughter uh, or one of my kids got sick one of my other kids, I got several kids, uh, while a supply chain issue kept them from life-saving medication they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. I do have the Jace case. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. 
This stuff could happen to any of us. It does not discriminate. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. That's code locked on to get $20 off your order at jacemedical.com. So some more recruiting stuff out there, Jimmy. Um, you guys over at On3 did a good job wrapping up the All-American Games. And you talk about the, the – there's an article about the guys that are left on the board. One of the articles uh, – one of the paragraphs is about Ryan Williams. And it talks about, hey, essentially Alabama – I mean, yeah, he's going to have to dodge Texas and dodge Auburn. Auburn probably more specifically – but uh, it, at the end of the article, it says, Williams does continue to reiterate he is locked in with Alabama. I am going to continue to believe he is locked in with Alabama. Yes, stranger things have happened. It doesn't mean he's. Uh, uh, I'm guaranteeing him to sign with Alabama. I don't think you can guarantee anything in college sports anymore about anything. So I do feel very good, though. February 9th is when he's going to be signing. And uh, that's his 17th birthday. And I feel very good he was still signed with Alabama. Jimmy, I just want to be sure you reiterate that. Uh, yeah, I'm very optimistic. Uh, you know, I've waffled here and there, but I'm, I'm back on uh, definitely strong optimism that Ryan Williams signs with Alabama. How about this? This isn't the reason. This isn't the reason, but it's one more reason. Um, as we know, over the weekend, Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback in the 2025 class, he committed to LSU. Uh, strongly considered Alabama. Uh, George McIntyre is going to commit very soon. Great, great quarterback prospect, big time. Great kid. Down to probably Tennessee and Alabama. We we think of BOL that that's possibly Tennessee there. I mean, more possibly Tennessee than Alabama. I mean, we'll see because no final decisions made and Alabama's right in the thick of it. So maybe Alabama, strong possibility. But you know, gun to your head right now, you probably go Tennessee there maybe. So if that happens, I think Alabama's going to look at uh, Juju Lewis, again, the uh, 2026 quarterback who may or may not reclassify to 2025. He's committed to USC, but that's a long way to go. Maybe, maybe there's a possibility for Juju Lewis. But if not Juju Lewis, I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if K.J. Lacey might become – front and center in terms of a high priority for Alabama. K.J., Ryan Williams quarterback, currently committed to Texas. May not switch. May not switch no matter what. Maybe not. But we feel that at BOL that it, it is possible that, uh, that that K.J. Lacey might strongly consider Alabama uh, should the two uh, start uh, dating, maybe for lack of a better term. Uh, I'm sure there's a better, I'm sure there's a better term. <laughs> but uh, if K.J. Lacey starts looking more, let's say, uh, realistic for Alabama, might that not help the Ryan Williams recruitment, uh, uh, which probably doesn't even need that help, but it wouldn't hurt. And uh, I am, as everybody that listens to the show knows, uh, I'm a huge K.J. Lacey fan, always have been. Now I'm a big George McIntyre fan. I'm a big Juju Lewis fan. So I'm, I'm not giving up on those guys, and I would be – you know, dancing the Irish jig right here on the show, uh, you know, if, if you land McIntyre or Juju Lewis. Uh, but I'd also uh, reserve that same dance for K.J. Lacey, who I, I think is great. I think his, his performance in the state championship game was just unreal. Now consider he has a whole nother year of improving to do, which he will physically in every other way. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super high on K.J. Lacey. I'd be excited about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm super high on K.J. Lacey. In fact, with Bryce Underwood committing to LSU, as you said. By the way, I, I think everybody needs to hang on for that a little bit. I mean, a lot of dominoes could fall where Alabama could get back involved there. That yep. said, I'm more of a bird in hand kind of guy. If you told me right now, Luke, you can continue to pursue any of these other quarterbacks you just mentioned or have KJ Lacey, I'm going to take KJ Lacey. That's me. Um, I would prefer to do it that way, but I understand Nick Saban has done it longer and better than I have. So we'll see what happens. Um, then another article on On3 about recruiting was the stock up 
for some of the guys that uh, participated in some of these games, notably the All-American game that was Saturday. And one, two of them actually uh, are Alabama commits now. Xavier Brown, um, they said that he was the top cornerback for the West team throughout the week. Uh, he passes the eye test. He's six foot one, one eighty. Um, very technically sound. He's a matter uh, modern day product. So you know he's gone up against the best all the time. He th and they use the the term that we love to say all the time. He's got a high floor, and um, I think that's positive. Then one of the other ones they said whose stock was up was Daniel Hill. We could see that. I mean, he scored two touchdowns. Now again, they weren't from seventy five yards out. I don't think that's what Daniel Hill's going to do a lot of. A lot of he's not going to have a lot of 75 yard touchdowns. He's going to have a lot of 10 and in uh, yard touchdowns. And he is a, he's just a beast. They said he's just built like a tank, six foot, 235. And um, he's also a very, very good receiver out of the backfield. So I'm, I'm very pro Daniel Hill. Uh, I'm super psyched we got him, even though. A couple months ago, I'd pretty much given up on it because it felt like he wanted to go to South Carolina for whatever reason. I'm super thrilled we got him. And uh, so to see two guys like that, uh, they'll probably be due for a rankings bump, I would say, wouldn't you think, in the end? Uh, yeah, very. Oh, oh, that that could be coming. And like I said, I, I'm not, you know, it does, it, 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 you know, I won't care a lot, but I know a lot of you will, and that's okay. Uh, I think when the rankings are reshuffled, when on three issues its final rankings, these other services issue their final rankings, then we tally it all up and the on three industry rankings, which is measures, you know, all the services opinions into one big pot. Uh, I think Alabama may end up number one over Georgia. Uh, it's going to be close. It's going to be really tight. If you look at the number of five stars, both signed, the number of four stars both signed and the number of three stars both signed, it's like identical. So Alabama and Georgia are super tight at one and two, and it won't take much reshuffling to change the order. Uh, and Alabama's guys did so well in these All-American games. And, and those All-American games are great evaluation tools because they're all in the field, sharing the field at the same time. So uh, that that's when you can really make it a little more accurate, be a little more certain about your opinion in terms of where, where the final rankings are. So, yeah. And of course, Alabama's also off to an outstanding start in 2025. Although there's some irony there, you know, Luke. For a while, Alabama was number one in the tw in the earliest 2025 rankings. <laughs> but when Ryan Williams, who Alabama did not lose, but when he reclassified into another class, it pumped Alabama down to where Alabama's like fourth or fifth now in the 2025 rankings. And again, I, I just find it funny because. The reason that they fell is because Ryan Williams moved to another class, but Alabama didn't lose him, so uh, no no harm. But it, it certainly uh, made Alabama's uh, rankings fall a little bit for 20, 25, but they'll be back because this 25 class, great group in state. Uh, and, and, and again, 2025 recruiting, it's been going on for a year, but it really ratchets up starting right around signing day, right? February, that February signing day, sort of to me is 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 the kicks the the, the kickoff for uh 2025 recruiting jimmy when we come back we got to talk about uh some bammers in the nfl because it was a rather historic weekend for alabama and one guy that's probably gonna have a new home next year and man he just he put on a show again But, you know, if you're into the NFL, then you should also be into FanDuel because FanDuel is where you want to go. It's an official partner of the NFL. Look, the NFL regular season has wrapped up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 smacks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet. You can bet on same-game live parlays. Those are a lot of fun. You can find bets in the new Explorer tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. They have a whole hub dedicated to parlays, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on, all one word, and make your first bet a chip shot field goal. It's that easy. You'll love it. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. So, Jimmy, um, 
Mm-hmm. A lot of big stuff from Alabama alums in the uh, in the NFL again this weekend. Najee Harris went ahead and, and continued the the streak of Alabama players scoring in the NFL to like a gazillion weeks in a row early on Saturday. Uh, congratulations to him. He's also gone over a thousand yards. He had a big game. Um, he's the only Steeler. I think it said the only Steeler who's gone over a thousand yards three straight years for the Steelers. That's crazy. That's hard to Hard believe to that Franco Harris and, uh, and and Jerome Bettis and and but they played fewer missing. games back right, then. That's true. That's true. I, I I know this. This is what surprised. I, I keep up with the NFL. Not probably not like you do, Luke. <laughs> but I keep up with the NFL. I, I can't believe that the Steelers are in the playoffs. <laughs> like the Steelers are in the playoffs. I thought the Steelers like you know weren't good, but apparently they're good. They're in the playoffs. And the fact that Najee had a thousand yard season, it seemed like they were playing the other guy quite a bit. The other guy, uh, David Warren. Warren. Yeah, Warren. Uh, it seemed like he was playing a lot, and the Steelers were sort of struggling. I think they've played three quarterbacks, hasn't Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, and now Mason Rudolph, who's starting now. And I don't know who's going to start in the, the playoff game, but it's just uh, I think the Steelers' season is wild to me. But I could not be happier that Najee had another 1,000-yard season, which keeps his value very high and because uh, he's at a time in his career when he needs to be productive because he, he he needs another contract is what he needs. Uh, the second contract is what can really bring you good fortune uh, in the NFL, and getting to that second contract is tough for running backs. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, he gets it. I would love to see him stick with the Steelers. I think they like him a lot. He's a community guy. Um, then there were uh, – well, let's. I wanted to lead off with this, and we got hung up on Najee. Um, Derrick Henry uh, yeah. goes over 150 yards in his probably his final game for the Titans, and then just gives a stirring emotional speech afterwards, just thanking everybody from you know the the president of the Titans all the way down to the guy that uh, you know sweeps up the parking lot. He was he was just gracious as he could be. But it sure felt – I mean, if he were to come back to Tennessee now, it would be kind of awkward the way that that speech was delivered. And I'm pro Derrick Henry going somewhere else. I hate it in the sense that I would have loved for him to, to finish up a tight, and I think he deserved more. Let's be real about this. He deserved more of a shot at the beginning of his career. Derrick Henry should have more yards than he has right now, and he's done phenomenally. But he should have more yards. It's almost like they didn't trust him in the beginning. And now – where he's he's beginning to get on the back end of his career. He's still pretty awesome. But I would love to see him wind up somewhere with a – wouldn't it be kind of weird if he wound up in San Francisco, it was him and Christian Ooh. McCaffrey on the same team, you know, considering uh, their Heisman thing. But Derrick Henry, awesome not that, he's not that old. He's still got a lot of tread left on the tire. And um, I would love to see him wind up, you know, in a Dallas, somewhere where he's going to be like – look, in Tennessee – he's not going to be as known as he would be if he's the running back in Dallas. That's just the way it is. But at first I thought, you know, what would be kind of cool is like he could come in at, with the Dolphins and be sort of a change of pace, but he doesn't fit their mold. They love the, the HNs and the Waddles and the Hills, and, you know, they want super speedy dudes, and I get it. But, boy, if the Dolphins had Derrick Henry back there too, and every now and again you're like, okay, yeah, we can sling it all over the field, but uh, we're also going to hand it off to this gigantic – Sasquatch back here, and you just try and tackle it. You know, in retrospect, uh, everything is so much easier in retrospect. And I know the running back position's been devalued, and 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 I know it has. But when you look back, Derrick Henry was incredibly productive at Alabama, playing against the toughest schedule in the sport, and won the Heisman Trophy. Goes to Indianapolis and proves he has otherworldly measurables. No, 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 Tennessee. No, no. What I meant was the combine. The combine. Oh, the combine. Okay. He, goes, he goes to the combine and has otherworldly measurables. He is the craziest round two pick. How is that guy not drafted in the first round? And he has proven conclusively that regardless of how you value the running back position, he was worth the first round pick. No, no question. Yeah. That's true. He, and how he fell to round, what was the knock? What what did they look at Derek and go, I don't know, he's too big, he's gonna hurt people. I mean, what what's the what's the knock as to how Derek fell into round two is just 
beyond me. But wow, what a career. And I just hope, almost like in the Julio Jones sense, Luke, uh, just like Julio, I hope Derek ends up in a place where he can win a Super Bowl. Because uh, that's what, what, what's missing. And and boy, he, he would so deserve that uh, trophy uh, on the, on the way out. And, uh, you know, in terms of what team he ends up for, I, I just hope it's a, it's a, one of these teams that you feel confident about making the, uh, making the playoffs. Yeah. I want him to go to, to a contender for, for darn sure. Um, and I mean, I think that's, uh, hopefully that can happen. Um, but, uh, I want him to go somewhere where he gets a, a spotlight too. You know, it's weird. I didn't know this till last night. <laughs> Do you know Leonard Fournette is on the Buffalo Bills? I did not yeah. know that. I mean, I knew he got picked up late. What a weird career he's had. Where now? How about this? Fournette, first round pick, right? I mean, Fournette yeah. went the first round pretty high to Jacksonville, if I remember right. And yeah. uh, and and, and I, I like Fournette uh, as a player. I like Fournette. I, I and and he's probably been a little undervalued in the NFL. But uh, how Leonard Fournette what goes round one and Derek goes round two. I mean that that's the world just not making sense to me. But it hey, it's gonna be a gr- it's gonna be a great weekend of games. Uh I, I get so excited. I mean, I like the NFL. We talk about the NFL all the time here. We talk about Alabama's guys in the NFL. What an awesome weekend college football will be over. This is the football we have left. Uh two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, and the first ever Monday night uh playoff game, one week from uh from from Monday. Uh Gosh, uh, what a, what a great weekend with Bama guys all over the place, including quarterback. And then finally, I mean, there were a lot of other things that happened with Bammers, but um, four receivers in one year go over a thousand yards: and Calvin Ridley, uh, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, and Amari Cooper. And and that that spans a pretty good bit of time, right there, too. Um, and boy, I felt bad for Calvin Ridley in the Jaguars in a sense, because, but I mean, in another sense, I'm like, uh, y'all, y'all sort of screwed that up yourself. I hate that Ridley also had to miss a full year for, yeah. for something really, really stupid because that that you know that does affect your career. But he almost won the game. There was a deep ball late in that game where Calvin had gotten behind the DBs and he could score, and Trevor Lawrence overthrew it by. Less than a foot. Yeah. The ball hit off Ridley's fingertips. It was not catchable. It was not Ridley's fault. It hit his fingertips. I, I think I think if it's just 10 inches yeah. shorter, he, he catches it and and then Ridley is heroically delivers Jacksonville into the playoffs. What not, to be. No, it wouldn't be. Um having said all that, uh Derrick Henry, just salute. I mean, I tell you one if you want to get me worked up, just I still see people, especially like Rick Newhouse will say Christian McCaffrey was robbed of a Heisman. No, he wasn't robbed. It was a close, it was a close race and should have been close. Derrick Henry did a lot of good things in a much tougher conference. Yeah. So against SEC schedule and then the playoffs. Yeah. So anyway, that's going to do it for today's uh podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tap.